Thank you, Helen, for preparing a high vibrational field. So in this fifth session in our creative lab, our theme is how can we become as a group, a conscious self for our nation. Conscious self is a term which Asajoli coined for a state of consciousness, which is the result of personality integration and at least the beginning of the contact with the soul. We could say the soul infused personality or as we call it in Hechal, the inner director. We have identified its seed in the center of the head, behind the Ajna. And it is the state of consciousness that we hold in this center of the head, which makes it possible to start working with collectives. Asatyoli calls this work with collectives or with nations, national psychosynthesis. And as we said before already, national psychosynthesis uh, follows the same laws and the same phases also as the work that we all do as an individual and also the work, the group work. So, in any case, whether it's a, it's a person or a group or a nation, the work always starts with self-reflection. Self-reflection is like a turning point in the, in the history, in the development of an entity. The first stage of it is an inquiry into what's actually now going on. What is my state right now? And from that develops a process of integration. We know it takes a long time, this process. But eventually also the flashlight is turned upwards to the higher self or soul in order to receive inspiration and guidance in this process. And then again, after a long time, there's a third phase, which consists of relating these two. It's on the one hand, the assessment of the present situation, and on the other, the vision that we obtain from the soul, the vision of a possible future an ideal model, as uh, Master Jolly calls it. And by combining these two, the actual state and the ideal state, um, we receive an understanding, we come to an understanding um, that serves us as a guide towards the next step. Now in Sagittarius, it's especially appropriate. So through such a process ongoing, the individual eventually reaches the state of consciousness of a conscious self, a conscious soul incarnate. So what is this on the collective level? What's the conscious self of a nation? It's actually built and expressed by groups, by groups who can hold this consciousness, this level of consciousness and dedicate themselves to become part of the conscious self of a nation, as the Jolie calls this a group of best citizens. The members of such a group, uh, they must have undergone this, this process 
and at least have a certain degree of personal psychosynthesis, um, have reached a stage of personality integration and at least a glimpse of soul contact. If this minimum requirement is missing in the, in the personal of a, of a group, then we can expect problems in the group life and also limitations to the depth and the sensitivity, the level of sensitivity that will be possible in the work. So we could say that the deeper the level of involvement with a national field, the more important it is to have a good group integration. Very generally, we can divide the tasks of a conscious self of a nation into three categories. You can call it looking inward, which is observing and working with the national personality. Looking upward, invoking the national soul. And looking outward, formulating and implementing a vision for the nation. Now, not all groups will engage in all three aspects of this work. We know that there are groups whose work is to be silent watchers for their nation. And we have highlighted this in our webinar last month. It, it focuses on the middle aspect, being a chalice for the energies of the national soul and making this soul energy available to the national field. If this is the focus of the work, then the level of group integration isn't so critical. It's always more powerful if, if the group is integrated. But here, um, it's actually each member tuning to their own soul. And then the group meets on soul levels and does the energetic work as if the soul. And that leaves to a great extent, the personality of the group and also the personality of the nation at the side. But then a group who takes on a more involved national work, dealing also with the, with the personality of, of the nation, then um, a process of group integration is really essential. Because when we make ourselves available as part of the conscious self of a nation, this can be very taxing. We need to be prepared to handle collective energies and forces. These come in undercurrents that are often not at all expected. And at least in our experience, as soon as we step into such a task, the group field becomes an arena for the process, for the national process, the national integration. And we start to manifest within the group life exactly that outer condition that we choose to work with <clears throat> that goes not only for national work. In general, it's like this. The moment we open ourselves to a service of some condition in the outer world, we meet it right in the group. So the different forces that are active in the national field, they will play um, through the group members. And then through the interaction of the group members, we may work through some of these national conflicts, clashes. Um, and by doing this, we contribute to lifting it to a higher level. And in order to do this safely, we need to have a coherent center in the group that holds the purpose and the group field should have 
quite a good level of harmony and uh, should be a stable group field. Um, this is, of course, easier achieved when we have a homogeneous group. The more alike people are, the, the easier it is to have a harmonious group field. Um, and when people come together from different backgrounds, perhaps even across a divide in the national field, then the challenge is bigger. And um, so the more diverse the backgrounds, the more this process of group integration is important. We aim to reach a level of group unity and of trust, which will also allow a person with an opinion that is op opposite, different from, from all the rest, that such a person will still feel comfortable and safe in the group. Let's for a moment imagine a group in which people supporting Mr. Biden and people supporting Mr. Trump will have to work in harmony for their nation. Just think what would that require of each group member? Very likely we will first sense attention and astral condition in the group and it takes a group heart that is built well and a group mind that is held in the light um, and if we have that then we can accept each contribution by each member and look at it together and bear it and of course this needs quite an, an amount of degree of courage and patience and self-discipline and really a true open mind um, the the willingness to keep a question mark rather than an exclamation mark behind our thoughts. If these characteristics exist in a group, then diversity becomes an asset. We can do much deeper and more significant work in a diverse group than in a homogeneous group. For example, for us, you know, to advance the forming of the conscious self of Israel and to invoke the soul of the area of Israel and Palestine, in the end it will take both Jews and Arabs, both secular and religious people and so on, to do this together. But for beginning it might not be possible to work like this. And that says something about the state of consciousness of a nation. So ideally, we will start with a more homogeneous group. And in this easier setting, to clarify the group's purpose and to build a harmonious field of trust and love and to establish a work method. This would be the best, the easiest. And then gradually open to more diversity of backgrounds and approach. But as we know, things have their own way to develop. It's not always like this. Um, there's a whole science of group work that is waiting to be discovered in this process. And uh, some of it we will continue to explore in following sessions. So this is uh, enough for today. So now we will have the privilege to hear about the experience of the national group working 
with Ukraine. And uh, while Alexander will be the spokesperson for the group, let us stand as silent watchers and observe and hold the group and the Ukrainian nation in our hearts, hearts at rest and minds in peace. Okay, over to you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you, Uta. Um, before we start, you asked if anyone else from our group would join, and um, Katya is also here, and as in many other initiatives, we work together there, so maybe Katya uh, would add something to what I will have to share today. And um, so let's start with the history of our group. Um, it's uh, our group started working together in 2012. Um, and the focus for that work was to prepare for the festival week of the new group of world servers. And um, we start meeting online. Uh, there are several people uh, in different cities of Ukraine. And um, so from the very beginning, it was a uh, um, virtual gathering. So uh, even though we know each other personally, um, most of us, um, but through all these years, so by now it's um, eight years, we've been working uh, online, meeting once a month, and recently we started meeting um, bi-weekly, the full moon and the new moon, meditating together. The way we work so how, is... How many, how many people you have? Uh, at the moment, there are five of us. Um, the way uh, we work is um, actually... I would say it's somewhat similar to this, the, the model that you described, Uta. Um, we when we get together um, we share about the unfoldment of events uh, in Ukraine and uh, in that sense we work as observers or should I say we aspire to work as observers. And um, uh, then we look into how um, we, we can how would I say it? We um, invoke the vision. We invoke the vision how things we, uh, in our understanding uh, should be developing. And we do it through me uh, sh meditation and sharing. And uh, because we um, till now worked only during the full moons uh, periods, um, we would invoke the energy of the full moon and specific astrological signs of each full moon uh, to connect with the archetype, archetypical vision of um, the next step, uh, what could be happening. And we 
meditate. We meditate uh, invoking the soul of Ukraine and connecting with all people of goodwill in the country and connecting with other groups uh, that uh, work um, consciously or uh, work as world service for focusing on own areas of service. So we subjectively link with the, this um, representatives of the new group of world service in Ukraine through our meditation. As we meditate, we um, uh, Uta mentioned this, uh, the, uh, the need in the work like this to have uh, aspirational coherent center. Um, the model that we use in our work, we uh, work with the group uh, centers. It's the group centers that's uh, uh, visualized through uh, our, in, in, at the beginning of our uh, meditation through uh, alignment, we visualize the group centers through which we connect. And we form them by projecting our uh, own individual centers to the group center. And um, that's the group center. And that group center becomes our aspirational coherent center. Through this center, we invoke the soul of Ukraine and we invoke our understanding of things. But we also work with the same way uh, we work with the centers of Ukraine. We, using our Im imagination, we invoke uh, the, we visualize the seven centers of Ukraine and mm, first of all the heart center and we work through the heart center of the, of the nation. It's very true what uh, Uta said about that the process of national integration can be uh, very taxing on the group that works uh, aspiring to be the uh, to be a conscious uh, self of a nation. Um, at some point, the this the process of involvement can become um, what is the right word um, to involving <laughs> and uh, it's one of the dangers of such work is to lose the uh, clear vision and uh, because None of us uh, aspirants or of third degree. We are all prone to our illusions and our glamours, and um, that's why it's important to practice the stage of the silent observer. And um, I can say that we've been learning this through our own mistakes. And uh, I know other groups who have been through the same phases of uh, over-involvement with the events in their own country, um, favoring one course of, event, of events uh, uh, rather than the other and it's 
even um, maybe getting too involved in with the interests of own country uh, and not caring so much about interests of other countries. And so this, as, as we start um, working with the energy of our, uh, the soul of our nation, uh, it really becomes part of our um, group identity. And uh, that uh, uh, requires a certain level of group maturity to recognize that as a danger and to make a step back. As example, I, I thought um, to, uh, of type of work that we've been doing throughout the years was to um, study the chart uh, of uh, Ukraine and uh, recognize uh, certain moments where uh, difficult transits are coming and that was the case in 2013, 2014 and 15. In, um, uh, with movement of Pluto, the planet of the first ray, the planet uh, destroyer, uh, moving through Capricorn, uh, in November 2013, it uh, came in conjunction uh, with uh, Uranus in the chart of Ukraine. And that was the time when um, the revolutionary events started unfolding uh, in the country. And we know that Uranus is the, it's the, the planet of revolutions and uprisings and changes and those changes uh, really became drastic. And to, uh, Uranus in the chart of Ukraine in the 10th degree of Capricorn. And a year later, the Pluto started approaching Neptune in the chart of Ukraine, which is in the 14th degree of Capricorn. And that's the time when the war uh, in the east of Ukraine uh, was unfolding in its uh, worst. And the, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine started accelerating. And all those turbulent times we've been meditating and trying to hold a position of observer and at the same time being pulled many times into invoking the certain course of events that we uh, saw is the we, as the best course of events. So that's just an example of uh, the work that uh, could be happening if uh, a group chooses to work with this format uh, to be a conscious self uh, of a nation. And um, the last thing I want to say, even though I have many more notes, uh, <laughs> is that interesting, definitely very interesting uh, what Uta said, that uh, this uh, way, uh, this modality of work is very uh, coherent with the Sagittarian uh, keynote. I, I see the goal, I reach that goal, I see, and then I see another. And the same, uh, it's this work requires understanding where we are now, connecting with the vision, the purpose, 
and then relating those two and invoking the movement towards that purpose. I'm not sure how, how long I have been talking about I think it's longer than I supposed to. It's a bit longer, but <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> so, yes, if you have anything more, if Katya would like to add something. Katya, if you would like to say something, please unmute yourself. And if not, then... If there are any comments or questions... And... Yeah. Maybe we can then... Um, I would like first of all to do a meditation so we can all link in our with our own nation and get a taste of, uh, of what we were just uh, um, touching upon. And then from that uh, meditative experience, perhaps to, to share and uh, to ask maybe more questions to Sasha or to, to me. Um, yes, it's a very delicate, delicate balance to hold to ponder a vision for a collective. So to make, how to be, um, to be part of the solution and not become part of a, the problem through over-identifying and, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let us go into meditation now, take all this with us. <clears throat> 